Hello from Village, I'm Erin Parsons, and in this video I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can wick your pillar candles. So I've selected two different molds to use today. I have a four inch metal mold and I have a two and a half inch diameter uh, a silicone mold. So I'm going to be working with both of those. And then the waxes that I'm going to work with, I'm going to make one candle with the Freedom Pillar Soy Wax, and I'm going to make the other one with the IGI 4625 Paraffin Pillar Wax. So I'm going to start with the paraffin because it is a two-pour wax. And what that means is that I will melt it down and I will pour my candle and then after it has had a chance to cool, you will notice that in the middle of the candle, it has sunk considerably. So this is completely normal. This is exactly what it's supposed to do. So what I'm going to do is after I do my first pour, I'm going to save some of my wax in my pour pot, and then I'm going to remelt that after it has cooled and I'm going to uh, pour that wax into the, the hole that has been created. So we'll start with the paraffin. I get asked all the time how you go about um, breaking this up. There is no special fancy way of doing it. I score it. And then uh, what I usually do is prop it up on something. Let's do a four pot. So I just prop it up on something. I usually will do this on the floor and just prop it up on a step or uh, a book or something. So I put the score side down and then I'm just going to smash it with a hammer. I mean, the score marks were there. It didn't make it, it didn't, they didn't break 100% on the score marks, but it just kind of gives it a little bit. See, it does somewhat, it does somewhat go on the score, but don't get too worried about that. So I broke up my wax now. I'm just making a small, I'm going to use the paraffin in the silicone mold. So I'm just going to melt down this smaller piece. Now, if you're looking to get precise, you can weigh it to see how much wax you're putting in. I'm not going to get that worried about um, the amounts. So we're just going to melt down our paraffin wax. And I'm going to scent both of the candles, but I'm not going to color them. I have chosen our very popular roasted espresso scent to work with today. It is probably the most popular fragrance oil that we sell. Uh, it smells like a really delicious roasted coffee. So we're going to use that. And as you may be able to see, it is not a clear uh, color, this oil. So it will affect the color of the candles. So um, you will see that it, it's not going to be pure white candles. So um, you'll be able to see what happens when we add a fragrance oil that's got some, some color to it. All right, so we'll let that wax melt and then we'll pour our candle. Okay, so while we wait for our wax to melt, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to wick this candle. Now, this one, we're going to put the wick in it, then pour the candle. Whereas with the metal mold, I'm going to show you how to hold the place for the wicks and then wick the candle after it is already set. So we'll start with this one by putting the wick into the candle. So I've selected a number two cotton braid wick to put in this one. So we're just going to figure out about how much wick we're going to need. Our wick off. And then I'm going to tie a knot 
in the bottom. We have a knot there. Now I have to feed it through this hole. It came with a wick pin, so I'm going to use the wick pin to push the wick through the hole. All right, so now I'm just going to reach in and pull that. Oh, pulled it too far. Let's try that again. Push it in. won't pull quite so hard this time. So there we go. So we just want that knot to help block the hole so that when I pour my candle, the wax is not going to end up all over the countertop. So then I'm going to use a wick clip and I will just slide that in there and then center it. All right. So we've got this one all wicked up and ready to make our pour as soon as our wax has melted. Now something to note uh, for the paraffin wax, when you're pouring a pillar candle with paraffin wax, it's a really good idea, and actually with soy as well, it's a good idea to pour them hot. So I melt it to the temperature that the wax recommends, usually around 180 degrees Fahrenheit, I add in my fragrance and my dye if I happen to be adding dye. I add that in right away and then I pour it right away. Because when you pour the paraffin and the soy hot, you're gonna get a nice, smooth, shiny finish. Now, if I were to wait and allow the wax to cool some, then you're gonna notice that it becomes a little bit more of a textured finish, a little bit more of a matte finish. So if that's the look you're going for, then by all means, you cool it and then pour it. But I like to have my uh, pillar candles nice and shiny, so you pour it as hot as you can. All right, so our wax is all melted now. Uh, this particular wax is supposed to well, melt between 175 degrees Fahrenheit and 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've got our wax all melted, ready to go. I'm going to measure out 8 ounces of wax because that's all I'm planning on using in this candle. So, there's the ounces. There's eight ounces. We'll pour it into our pour pot. I'd like to use the pour pot only for mixing my fragrance oils and dye if I were to be adding dye. And that leave this and the melt melter for just wax. So then that way we're not getting a whole lot of contamination in these. All right, so next I'm going to need 15 mils of my roasted espresso. Or half an ounce. All right. So we'll put half an ounce of fragrance oil in there. I'm gonna stir stick and we're gonna stir it up. Get it all blended in there. And then we'll pour it into our silicone mold that we have all wicked up already. Now, as I said before, the paraffin is a two pour wax. So because I'm not coloring it, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But if you are coloring it, you definitely want to make um, enough that you can save some wax in your pour pot after you do your first pour and then you can remelt it and then add that to the sink hole because when you're at, working with dye and doing two pours it can get a little bit tricky if you make a second batch of wax with this because I didn't dye it I could make a second batch 
and they would match up pretty closely, but you would need to make sure that you get your, um, your recipe exactly the same in order to make sure that your colors will match up the same. So we're gonna do our first pour and I'm gonna save some of the wax for my second pour. All right, so we've made our first pour. We're gonna let that sit and set. And then we're gonna start working on our uh, soy wax candle. Okay, so I'm gonna pour my soy wax into the melter so that it melts. So I'm gonna use a little bit more of the paraffin than I did with the paraffin because it's a bigger mold. our soy wax is all melted. Now, unlike the paraffin wax, the soy wax is just a one pour wax. So you won't need to worry too much. It might sink the slightest little bit around the wick, but not enough that you need to do a second pour. Maybe just enough that you might want to um, use a hair dryer or a heat gun just to melt a tiny little bit on the top. But what you need to also remember is when I take my candle out of the mold and it will be what's in the bottom is going to be the top of your candle and what you see at the bottom is actually going to be the bottom of your candle. So you don't need to worry too much about how how good the top, uh, the top of the mold looks because it's going to actually be the bottom of your candle. So let's pour this out. over probably 13 well, we have about 14 ounces I would say now I only have a 30 ml bottle of my roasted espresso and I will only have 15 mils left of that so I'm not going to be fully scenting this but normally I would probably put about 6% fragrance oil in that um, you can put a little bit more than that but 6% always seems to be enough of a scent load for me. All right, yeah, we've got 15 mils. We're gonna add that into our wax and mix it. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the wick that I selected, the cotton braid, it is not primed. It is just a raw wick. So priming is when there's a coating of wax on the wick and that coating of wax is there to act as fuel for the flame before the melt pool gets going. So its main purpose is up at the top of the wick where you're going to light it. It gives the flame a little bit of fuel to get it some heat going and until the melt pool starts to be created. And then from there, the wax from the melt pool will go up the wick to keep the flame fueled. So I'm going to be thinking ahead and I'm going to make my wicks. Oh, and I left my scissors. So I'm going to make my wicks and I'm going to prime them prior to pouring my candle. So 
So I'm gonna use three wicks. I've got the number two cotton braid. So all I need to do to prime it is just dip it into the wax. Careful not to burn yourself. And then I'm going to lay it flat. So we'll do that with all of them. And hopefully this will help us while we're trying to uh, feed the wick through the holes that we're going to be making. Sometimes the raw wick can be a little tricky to get it to slide through. Oops. Oops. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So we'll let those harden along with our candle. And now we're going to pour the candle into the metal mold with the magnet. Make sure your magnet is there. You could also plug it up with some putty and some duct tape, something like that. Just something that's going to keep the wax from pouring through if you're not going to be using that hole for your wick. Right. So now we're going to have to just wait on that candle to set up a little bit before we slide in our wick pins. Okay, so the candles have had a chance to set for a little while. I think that the paraffin one is probably getting close to pulling away from the silicone, but we'll just leave it for now. And then the soy one is looks like it's ready for us to start putting our uh, wick pins in. So I have somewhere, I have made a template to help show me where I should put my wicks. Now I made this in a previous video. So if you check out the video on um, how to properly put multiple wicks into your candles, you'll see how I created this. Just basically draw it, draw us, like just copy it straight onto a piece of paper with a pencil, cut it out. And then uh, because I was doing three in this, um, I divided it into 120 degree sections because a full circle is 360 degrees and then divided by three is 120. So then we just figured out uh, with a protractor the 120 degrees to find our different sections. I found the center of those sections and, uh, and then I cut them out so now I can use this to help me place my wicks on this candle in the best, best spot. So I'm just gonna set it there and then I'll just slide this down in. All right. So those look pretty good. So now I'm just gonna continuously spin these to make sure that the wax doesn't harden around them and to leave a good sized hole for us to slide our wicks through. So we'll just keep spinning those every once in a while until the wax has completely hardened 
and then we will be able to slide our wicks through and wick our candle. So we'll give that a little bit longer to harden up and I'll just keep coming back every once in a while to spin those and then once the uh, wax has completely set we'll be able to take the candle out of the mold and put our wicks in. Okay, so our candles have had some time to set up and they're all ready for them to come out of the molds. So what we're gonna do with the paraffin candle is I've started to uh, remelt my wax that was left in my pour pot. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut, cut the candle where we had the knot and then we're going to slide the candle gently because we don't want to pull the wick out of the candle. Oh shoot, we did. Oh darn. Well, we're going to have to re-wick it. <laughs> These are the things that happen that you just have to roll with the punches. The joys of candle making, right? <laughs> so, all right, so there's our, we just did a little candle. So that's a good thing because now we're gonna have to try and re-wick it. So I'm happy that it's just a little candle. So, we'll slide that. I'm just gonna cut off the frayed part to make it a little bit easier for me to slide that wick back in. Sometimes things don't go as planned and you have to be ready to, uh, to pivot. So here we go, pivot. All right, go in there, wick. All right, change of plans. I'm gonna get a different kind of wick that will slide up in there a lot easier. So we're going to switch over to the zinc wicks for our paraffin candle now, because these are pre-primed and they're nice and stiff and it should, in theory, slide up through this hole a lot easier than the others. And it's already tabbed, so I'm not gonna have to pre-tab it, or tab it, because it's already pre-tabbed. So that worked. Okay, back in business. We've got our wick in there. So normally you would just not pull the wick. I was using the wick to help pull the candle out of the mold. Not a good idea. See, these are the things that we don't do when we're making candles. So anyways, now we have a wicked candle and I'm not sure if you can notice but there is a sink hole where the wax as the wax cools the paraffin wax it cools and sinks down around where in the middle or where the wick would be if you're using one wick so that's why you needed to save some of the wax back in order to flatten out this candle so I'm going to set that now. I'm going to use I'm going to use this wick clip because the because the wick is in there now, it makes the candle not sit evenly. So I'm just going to put the wick clip down on the other side so that the candle sits flat. And I might even use another one. So there. So now my candle is sitting flat for when I add that second pour on top of this. So I'm all right, so we've re-melted our wax. You need to make sure you keep a close eye on it because you only have a little bit of wax in there, so you don't want to put let it get too hot. I think I did let mine get a little bit hot, but that's okay. So now we're just gonna pour the wax 
into the cavity that was left at the bottom. And you just want to put enough that you make your candle flat. So you have to be careful as you're pouring. All right. So we're going to let that one set. And now we're going to take this one out of the mold. So there is our soy candle. So we got our holes for where the wicks will go. And the reason why we left them in and spun them instead of pulling them out and putting them back in uh, randomly as they're setting is because we don't didn't want to make a whole bunch of holes because sometimes when you take it out and put it back in you don't put it back in the exact same spot and that will make you have several holes and make your candle just not look as clean so we've got those so now we just have to put our wicks through. So I've got my pre-tabbed. Now hopefully these will slide through easier than, than our little boo-boo did. So it looks like it's going to. So that's one. And see how having it primed helps. There's two. And there's three. Now, some people might not feel the need to put a tab on these. I like to have a tab just because that tab is going to stop your wick from burning all the way down to the, the surface that it's sitting on. So if it was sitting on my table, that's wood. I don't want the wick burning all the way down there. It can scorch the table. It could possibly start a fire. So I like to put a tab on just to keep things a little bit safer because the wick will go out once it gets to the top of that tab. So I have our large big mouth um, or big holes the right tabs here that I am going to try. Hmm. Actually what I'm gonna do is slide it up from the bottom and then slide it in there. And then I'm just gonna push that tab up nice and flat. And then we'll do that with the other two. So it's easier to do it this way. Put it in through the bottom and then slide it through the hole and then just push that tab up flat. And finally, our third wick, slide it through the tab, and then slide the wick up through the hole. So I'm gonna just use my toenail clippers to clip them off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on my melter and then I'm going to set this down on the melter surface for just a few seconds to seal those wick tabs in and to flatten out any little bumps that might be on the bottom of my candle. So we'll let that get warm. just helps to seal them down in there a little bit better and help it so your candle will sit flat.
right, so my first attempt at my paraffin pillar candle failed miserably. Uh, not only did I pull the wick out when I was trying to get the candle out of the mold, I also let the wax for my second pour get a little too hot and it um, over poured down the sides of the candle, leaving run marks uh, in the sides of the candle. So it was a fail <laughs> and I considered uh, re-taping this video, but then I decided that, you know what, I think it's important that people see that even somebody who's been making candles as long as I have, I started seven years ago. I learned from the founder of Village Crafting Candles, Sue Griffiths, who I consider to be the candle guru. She knows just about everything there is to know about candle making. So even people who've been doing it as long as I have and have the knowledge that I have, we still make mistakes. And the most important thing is that you learn from your mistakes and that you keep on trying. So I have re-poured with my uh, number two cotton braid wick. I re-poured my pillar candle. It's set. I have a nice sinkhole down the middle. Now I'm not gonna make the mistake that I did the first time and pull the candle out so that you can see the sinkhole, but I think you can see it there. So we're going to do our second pour. I watched this wax very closely as it was melting and I made sure that it had just melted. And then I took it off the heat so that it, it's not going to be too hot that it melts the wax if it happens to run down the sides. So we're gonna pour, do our second pour here, just filling, just filling filling that, that sinkhole. So we're gonna let that set, and then I'll do the same thing that I did with our beautiful soy wax candle. It turned out beautifully. I was very happy with how it turned out. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did with it um, in our uh, melter. I'll just run it across, along the bottom so to flatten out the bottom of the candle to make it look a little nicer. So we'll be back as soon as this sets. Okay, so the candle has now completely set where we did our second pour. So now we are going to attempt to pull the candle out of the mold without having the wick come out. So I will not be pulling on the wick this time. I'm just gonna clip this off. All right, so now I'm just going to encourage the candle to come out on its own, which it did. So there we go. And it's trimmed there to a pretty good amount. So now I'm just going to trim this off a little bit down here. And I'm going to try to put a, a tab on the bottom because I don't want my candle to be able to burn right down to the surface. So we're going to see if we can get this, this tab. Go in. It takes a little bit of playing around with. There we go. All right, so we'll slide that down. Now, the second port isn't completely hard, so I was able to push it down in a little bit. Trim the access off, and then I'm going to plug in my melter to get it warmed up. And then we'll just slide this around on the bottom of the melter to get this bottom nice and flat so that our candle will sit nice and flat. what our bottom looks like and it sealed the tab in there now I'm gonna set it on my surface probably I wouldn't normally put it on my surface but I can just scrape any melted wax off my table after so there is our two candles we have a paraffin and a soy and we did the soy by adding in the wicks after, 
and we did the paraffin one by adding in the wick right from the beginning. So those are two options on how to wick your pillar candle. And just remember that when you make mistakes, just keep on trying.